So I have some amazing news that I'll be touching on today. Hopefully you guys like it as much as I do. So let's just jump into it without much further ado. First things first, I have to touch on the fact that we are getting another new DLC for Beat Saber. Uh, this one is going to be Panic at the Di Disco coming next week as well as 360 mode hitting us in December. While it's not clear at this point what systems it's going to be launching on, I'm willing to bet it's likely going to be all of them. But that will likely come in the form of another free DLC, maybe with more music. Uh, they've been pretty, pretty generous when it comes to the free updates and even the paid updates have been rather generous when you think about it. Uh, it's been like the cost of a CD. So hopefully we, it's all pretty quick and easy and explanatory, blah, blah, blah. Um, like I said, free update, maybe next week, Panic at the Disco, Beat Saber, and 360 mode. So you'll be able to hit all the notes on all the sides in December. So that's something to look forward to. At least I think it is. Next up, I do have to mention that the Oculus Quest is going to be getting hand tracking here pretty soon. While they didn't give any kind of specific launch date, what they did give us was a launch window. So sometime in early 2020. That said, it could launch anywhere between January and June. Because that's all early 2020. Uh, while the while the feature in itself isn't specifically marketed as being applicable to apps per se, the feature is supposed to allow users to operate the headset using hand gestures. Hopefully, future applications that launch after that launch window will actually have that feature applied. So maybe, obviously I'm just spitballing here, but maybe apps that launch on the Quest following that launch window will actually have hand tracking available so you'll be able to play your game a little bit better. This next part has even more exciting news in it. You know, because there is a rumor a rumor, mind you, that when the PlayStation 5 launches next year, here in about 13 months, we may be able to expect not just a standard model of the PlayStation 5, but also a Pro launching in parallel with that new console, which is just amazing and could very well win PlayStation the console war before it even starts. <laughs> This is coming out of a YouTuber by the name of, what was his name? Denji Nishikawa. The, one of the few things that does, in fact, lend some credence and credibility to this claim is that he has made accurate predictions in the past regarding the Nintendo Switch Lite. One of the things he does, he does claim in this video, or in his video, is that that upcoming Pro version is going to be roughly $100 to $150 more than the standard version of the PlayStation 5. And it is expected to be, well, as you could probably guess, a higher tier model aimed at the hardcore gamers, those that would, those that previously ordered the, the PS4 Pro and Possibly the Xbox One X. Uh, one of the, whereas the base model of the PlayStation Five is aimed at more casual gamers and those in, aiming for more uh, gameplay rather than visual fidelity. So, whether or not that's actually the case remains to be seen. Though, as Sony has not made any specific claims regarding launching a pair of consoles at the same time. So whether or not that actually comes to pass remains to be seen. Okay, so 
the last piece of the night, the review of the Pimax 8KX headset. Um, so first things first, I was not able to find too many confirmed specs for the 8KX. However, one thing I can tell you is that Tom's Hardware did a review of the 5K headset, and I found a found the list of specs for the standard 8K headset. But during the review of the 5K, Tom's Hardware tried out the recommended values for the 8K headset. That is an AM an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. While the results they saw using that specific graphics card were not really amazing, they were enough to do the job. That being said, uh, even their upscaled value for the graphics card being the RTX 2080 GPU for the 5K Plus headset still didn't was was still running into a little bit of performance trouble. While they still haven't tried, while they still hadn't tried the 2080 Ti version, it's likely that that wouldn't that that wouldn't be able to run full specification either. That being said, uh, this this headset, the 8KX, is going to be your best bet, your very best bet, if you want to future-proof your virtual reality setup. The specifications I saw for the 8K, not the 8KX, included two, count them, two screens each with 3840 by 2160 displays, a 200-degree field of view, Dual customized low persistence liquid panels, an 80 hertz frame rate, and well, the, the whole thing was just amazing. Uh, the the weight on it is less than 500 grams, so it's just a little bit over a pound, but not by much. And it's. It says here the body size is 28.1 by 10.8 by 13.6. While it doesn't give units, I would suspect that that is centimeters. So the, the entire length of it from end to end is going to be close to a foot. So chances are you will be able to enjoy this entire or enabled headset well a while as there are not going to be many graphics cards on the market if any that are capable of running this thing at full specs quite yet the, the price on this thing thirteen hundred dollars and that's just the headset no controllers no base stations no tracking nothing just the headset for thirteen hundred dollars. Now, Pimax does sell a few kits that you would be able to pre-order or order or whatever. And those are, well, the controllers themselves and the base station. That that combo right there is going to run you about three hundred dollars. And on top of that, there are a few options that I saw listed on Reddit that are going to bring the price up even more, assuming you want to uh, assuming you want to actually follow through with those. But in any case, those are what you have to look forward to. Early 2020 for a cons mostly consumer launch date. And December 2019 for Kickstarter backer launches. Hopefully, all of us will be able to enjoy that soon. 
but as far as whether or not you'll actually be able to enjoy it is another question entirely. But in any case, they they do want to make this thing as thief proof as possible. And it looks like they did the job. If you guys are still here and you're feeling charitable in some way, you can activate that charity in a few different ways. The first one, you can go to humblebundle.com and pick out one of the bundles that they have for sale there. When you get one of these bundles, you're not you're not only able to get some good software or books or games or what whatever it is that you're you're choosing, but you're also able to support a charity of your choice. They have a few different ones available, so you don't have to feel necessarily tied down to helping children or animals. The, even though, well, animals are always a good one, aren't they? And then, if that is up your speed, I'm selling these headphones on Amazon. Link on screen. I personally use them. I really like them, and they've been working out really well for me. If that still doesn't really work out well for you, I've got a link on screen also for my Patreon. Well, up here somewhere, I, I don't know where I'll put it, but you'll find it somewhere, I hope, probably, maybe. Uh, I think this is a good place to end the video. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible person for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.